This video will introduce you to the landmarks of the head. We'll start with the glabella, which is a flat, hairless surface located right in between the patient's eyebrows. This is on the patient's frontal bone. We'll then move on to the patient's supraorbital foramen. That's located on the medial third of the eyebrow. If you do this skin rub with your finger and feel for a little notch, you'll feel it right there on the medial third surface of the patient's eyebrow. Directly inferior to that, on the patient's maxilla, we'll find the infraorbital foramen. Both these spots may be tender as there are nerves running through both of those foramina. We'll then move on to the mental foramen, located here on the lateral side of the patient's mandible. You'll feel a small hole or a dimple there when you palpate it. We'll move on to the zygomatic arch, which is located on the patient's zygomatic bone right here on the patient's lateral side, just anterior to the patient's external acoustic natus or anterior to their ear. If you palpate up and down, you'll be able to feel an arch or a ridge, and that's the zygomatic arch. We'll move on to the symphysis menti, which is where the two parts of the mandible come together during development, and it's essentially the midline of the patient's mandible. Sometimes you'll feel a dimple or a cleft here. Next is the external acoustic meatus which as we said earlier, is the patient's ear. You don't really need to palpate this one, but it's important to visualize and know where it is. Our next landmark will be the TMJ, or temporal mandibular joint. It's where the mandible connects to the temporal bone on both sides. You can palpate this joint by putting your hands just anterior to the patient's ears and having the patient open and close their mouth several times. You should feel the mandible dislodge from its firm, firm locking position along the temporal bone. Next will be the mandibular angle, which if you move inferiorly from the patient's ear along the mandible, you'll eventually find an angle or a bump where the mandible changes directions drastically. That's the patient's angle. We'll next look at, look, excuse me, at the patient's mastoid process, which is, I'll have the patient turn a little bit here, directly posterior to the patient's ear, you'll feel a small bump and that is the patient's mastoid process. In between the patient's mastoid process, which we just found, and the patient's mandibular angle, which we found earlier, there's a small cleft or a gap there. You can put your index finger inside that gap and palpate for a small, bony, firm protuberance. That is actually the transverse process of C1, also known as the atlas bone. Now the patient turn all the way sideways here and we'll palpate down along the back, the posterior side of the patient's skull for a small bump located right about here, and that's called the inion. And if we move from the inion, which we just found, back to the mastoid process, just posterior to the ear, along that line is called the nuchal ridge, which you can palpate with your hand, and it helps to do skin drag up and down to really feel along that ridge. That completes the important landmarks of the head.